Hello friends, we are going to do a tutorial on how to create some simple HTML pages. It should be kind of a review for you, so I'm going to go fast. Uh, I'm going to start typing right now. Uh, and just so you know, I'm using the W3 schools as a prototype for uh, my content. It's super useful and there's lots out there for you to learn. Um, and in fact, you could copy and paste the code um, from their page and get yourself started to where I am now. I just want to explain what we're looking at and how to set up your files. And then I'm going to do a tutorial on some slightly more complicated yada, yada, yada. Great. I have typed the following. And I am in a HTML editor called Sublime Text. Um, you can upgrade, and it is very reasonably priced. There are many, many, many text editors out there. You can use whatever you like, BB Edit, uh, Coda. Just Google and see. You'll, you'll find something. OK, cool. I have made this document. I'm in Sublime Text. I'm now going to go File, Save. And what I want to do is I want to tell the computer what type of file this is. And in fact, it is an HTML file. OK, so instead of dot doc, which is a Microsoft Word file, or dot PSD, which is a Photoshop file, this is a dot HTML file. You can also do dot HTML, HTM without the L. Uh, in the old days of HTML development, it was a little bit of the wild, wild west, and there were a lot of options. I'm also going to call this index, and anytime you have a home page, you don't call it home page. You don't call it main page. You don't call it anything else but index. There are some rare exceptions or some exceptions, but you are not at that level, so forget it. And then on my desktop, I'm going to make a new folder. Uh, called AA underscore website. I have a bunch of junk on my desktop, and so I'm calling it AA, so it will appear, appear at the top of my list when I go alphabetical. And I'm going to save this index.html in that AA website folder. Boom. Guess what happens? Now Sublime Text knows how to read the words that I wrote in this document. It can tell that it is an HTML file. Now, I can use Sublime Text to create uh, style sheets. I can use it to do JavaScript. I can do PHP, a whole bunch of other languages. So when I first open up a document, I need to make sure that I'm letting Sublime Text know what type of document it is. Uh, and I'm going to go, whoopsie doopsie, not what I meant to do. Um, I'm going to bring up my desktop here, my little uh, finder window because I want to look at what I'm doing in my finder at the same time that I'm doing this junk over here. Now, just take a moment. If you saved your file, does it say .html? Does it say .html.txt? No, that's not what we want. It has to have the final extension of .html or .htm. And again, this is in a folder on my desktop. Perf. I'm going to keep that there. Let's take a look at this. What's this first line? The first line is telling the browser window what type of document it is. It is an HTML document. Here we go. I'm going to open up this HTML document, but I'm also going to close it. So I'm saying, hey, heads up, everything inside of these two is going to be an HTML document. Cool. I also have this header tag, which I've opened and I didn't close here. To close a tag, you have to put a forward slash. So I opened a header tag and I closed it here. The header tag, HTML page is broken up into two main sections, the head and the body. The head is where you put um, your code, a lot of different codes. It's where you link to files that you want automatically get pulled into your document. It's not where you put any content in your document. And the body was where you put your main content. So I'm going to say, hello world. 
here in the body of my document. I'm going to save it. And then I want to open up this index file. I'm working on it. I'm writing on it in Sublime Text. But the way I want to see it is to view it in my browser window. So I'm going to go open with, and now I'm going to choose Firefox. And why are we using Firefox? Because it does not sell your data and information to parties unknown. It's cool. Firefox with uh, DuckDuckGo is the way to go if, if you like privacy. Awesome, my browser window. Look, hello world. Perfect. Hello world. Now I do have this title up here. By the way, I'm going to indent it because the title lives inside the opening and closing head tag. And I'm going to say blarg. Perfect. Just what I want. And now I'm going to go back here and I could go here and I could right click and I could say open with Firefox again. Although I saved it in here, I can just hit refresh. Now you might be like, hey, there's no blarg here next to hello world. No, but there is blarg up here in this tab. Uh, that is what the title is. The title is uh, the title of your page. Uh, you should name your title appropriately uh, because search engines look at the titles of your pages um, in terms of giving you results. I don't care about search engines. I'm just doing a demo here, and Blarg is way more funny than size website page. Great. Cool. Okay, I'm going to write some more stuff. Stuff to be written. Wow, should have prepared that before. I'm going to go over here again and hit refresh. Hey, wait a minute. Look, hello world. Uh, and then a space, and then stuff to be written, but it just globs it all on the same line here. Here's the thing. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. So what's happening is that everything that I have in here needs to be marked up to be displayed properly in my browser window. So if I want a break between these two words, then I need to tell it to put a break in. Now, I'm writing... Uh, caret, br, and then I'm going to do forward slash, and then close caret. Carrots are also called delineators. And uh, why am I doing that? Remember how I said the HTML was the wild, wild west? Well, everything should have an opening tag and a closing tag, right? But the break tag, when it originally came out, didn't have, and to this day still doesn't have a closing tag. So... To be compliant in HTML5, we're going to make sure that we insert a break, a closing tag in our break tag. I know it's kind of wackadoodle, but you'll just see. You'll just get used to it. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. By the way, I'm just using uh, command S um, and I'm hitting save. Now let's go over here and hit refresh. Hey, there's my break. Great. Uh, cool. Uh, the next thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to make a link. And I would like to link to my favorite website, The Useless Web. Great. Uh, it searched, duck, duck, go searched it for me. Here I am, The Useless Web. Great. Take me to a useless website. I'll let you explore that. So do I just copy this link and toss it in my document? Here, I'll save that. And yeah, sorry, I, I need to purchase this. I had it on another computer and then I haven't refreshed, sorry. No, this is not a link in the way that we want it to be. No, bad, bad. What we need to do is we need to use a hypertext markup language to indicate that this is a link. So using that hypertext markup language, I'm going to Put a caret in there and an anchor tag. The anchor tag knows that I want to jump from wherever I am to wherever I want to go. And in this case, I want to do an anchor tag to a hypertext reference page. By the way, Sublime Text has um, given me a code hint. And yes, I like that. I want that code hint to be href equals, and then in quotes, I'm going to put my link. 
cool. It could use some other attributes, but we'll get into that later. I'm going to save this and he will hit refresh. Oh no, what happened? My link is gone. Well, fortunately for our sanity, we know that the anchor tag does need a closing tag, like head, uh, like body, like HTML. So we have an opening anchor tag here and a closing anchor tag here. Perfect. I'm going to hit save and I'm going to hit refresh. But oh no, nothing's happening. Yes, this opening anchor tag and this closing anchor tag should be surrounded to whatever I want to link here. And did you notice anything? If something is inside of these uh, carrots, it's invisible, right? So I put this, this link inside of my anchor tag carrot and it's invisible. But now when I hit save, I can hit refresh. Oh, hey! Boom. Okay, it took me to the useless website page and erased my main page. We'll address that later. I just want to show you some basics. Cool. Now I would like for this useless web to be on the next line. So I'm going to highlight this break tag, copy it, and put it here. Oh, ooh, I don't want hello world twice, so let me take that off. One thing Unlike many things in the world, um, I will encourage you to copy and paste in HTML. If something is working, you want to copy the thing that's working and paste it in there, as opposed to what happened if you didn't copy and you typed it, then you could introduce errors. So if it works, copy and paste. Okay, I'm going to go back here. I'm going to save because I'm just going to use this command S. I'm going to hit blah, blah, blah. Perfect. Great. So I got some words and I have my first link. We're going to come back to talk more about links, but not at this moment. How about I want to put an image, image in this, an image. Uh, the image, I need to have a source and the source should be smiley, dot, uh, smiley, smiley face. And the image is an annoying tag because it's like our break tag where I have to do forward slash caret. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't have an, a matching closing tag. It is what we call self-closing. So I'm just going to give you a heads up. This isn't going to work at all. When I hit refresh, I get this weird thing. Why? Because this what that I wrote here is utter garbage. This is ridiculous. You can't do any, any, anything that I did here. Uh, a, I need an image. I don't actually have an image. I just pretended to have an image. And B, I have a space in my image title. Guess what? No spaces. Just forget about spaces from here on out in HTML. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have the coronavirus. I just inhaled some spit. I'm going to go to the internet and I'm going to say, can I have an open source copyrighted smiley face? I'm going to use Unsplash. Unsplash is free open source copyright images. I'm going to type in smiley face. Of course, it would be better if I used my own real image, but um, no, I'm not doing that. I see these are people smiling. That's too classy for me. I'm going to use this dumb picture and I'm going to download free. And I'm going to, I will, I will say thanks. I will. Look, attribution is appreciated and allowed. Copy the text below or embed a credit badge. We'll come back to that. I'm going to leave it up there because we've got to give this person credit. Great. Uh, so that's that. And here's the image that I have. And what I need to do is that image was in my downloads folder. And what I need to do is I need to drag this to my website folder. The HTML, the hypertext markup language, is super dumb. It doesn't know where my image is. I have to tell it where my image is. And I need to, to tell it where it is. I should put it in a reasonable place where the hypertext markup language can find it. Uh, this isn't like Microsoft Word. You know you can drag and drop stuff in Microsoft Word, and you can drag and drop stuff into PowerPoint. 
This is not the case. You're not actually putting anything inside the hypertext markup language document. Sorry. You're not putting anything inside the HTML document. You are just using the document to point to where you want stuff to be shown. Oh, I clicked on it and I opened it up. I didn't mean to do that. What I wanted to do here was say smiley dash face, right? No spaces. No, you were going to put a space in there, weren't you? No, you can't. It has to have no spaces. And in this case, it's a JPEG. It might be a ping or a GIF or something. It doesn't kind of matter, like uh, the ping, the GIF, all that is shown. It can be shown on the web, not a Photoshop file. You're going to have to look up what image files can be used on the web. Uh, so that part doesn't matter as long as I reference that here. Oh, look. Okay, okay. This might be happening. Smiley dash face dot JPEG. Perfect. I'm going to hit save. Command S. Nope. Sorry. Cancel. Command save. And now I'm going to hit refresh. Oh, there's my image. Giant. Massive. It's massive. It is way too big. This is not what I wanted. That's too big. <sighs> Let's see. I'm going to click on my image and do Command I on a Mac. Command I. And that gives me information about this image. It lets me know that it's 1.5 megabytes, which is a pretty large file. Uh, I might want to have other images on my page. It's also 34 uh, 3,456 pixels wide by 4,608 pixels high. Guess what? My computer screen is uh, 1920 by 1080. So this image is way too big. It's probably way too big for most people's computer images. I gotta change that. I'm gonna right click on this and open with Photoshop. And I'm going to edit this because no. First, I only wanted the smiley face, so I'm just going to crop that. Perfect. If you don't know Photoshop, I can't help you here. This is for HTML. There's other lectures in the world about Photoshop, but they're not coming for me. And then I'm going to go to image, image size. How big is this now? Well, shoot, it's still 1,419 pixels wide by... 1,523 pixels high. I'm sorry, that is way too big for my document. So I'm just gonna go 200 pixels wide. I am gonna take a minute here to note that this image is 200 pixels wide and 215 pixels high. Okay, great, perfect. It looks eeny weeny. Remember, we're just gonna double click on the magnifying glass and then this makes this the actual size on my particular screen. Perfect, great, great, great. I'm gonna do in Command S and I'm gonna save that buffer. Cool. Now, I'm gonna go back to Command I on a Mac just to get the info. Do you need to do this? No. Do I need to show you what I'm doing? Yes. Could you live your whole life without doing Command Info? Yes, but I wanted to show you that we now got this down to 70 kilobytes, which is very reasonable. And then here, oh, here's our dimensions, 200 by 215. Perfect. Great. Cool. I'm going to refresh my page, and that's what I was looking for. That. Something that size. Something that works within the context of the text that I have. Still annoying. I don't want this useless web jacked up, this huge space. No, I don't want it, so I'm going to highlight the break tag, and I'm going to put it in here. Are there better ways of managing breaks? Of course, but we're just beginning in the web. So cool. Um, one more thing. On some websites, I've had up to 100 pictures on one page. I made sure that they were small and file size so they didn't make my page really big and bulky. But it will be kind of disorganized if I have all of my files jumbled in the same folder. So I'm not gonna, uh, I'm gonna make a new folder and I'm gonna call it images. All lowercase, please, all lowercase. Many, many people will make a capital I-M-A-G-E-S and then in their code later on, 
it's an issue, so make it all lowercase. And now I'm going to put my image in that images folder. Look, you can see. Hi. There it is. Now I'm going to refresh my page. Uh-oh. What happened? Remember back five minutes ago when I said that all HTML does is tell a browser where to find stuff and how to display stuff? I here have smileyface.jpg, uh, but that means that this file is sitting right next to this index.html file. I changed that. That situation has changed. It is now inside of an images folder forward slash smiley face JPEG. Now I'll hit refresh. Oh, got it. Okay. I got it. Perfect. Cool. Um, I am not finished yet because it is quite naughty to not explain to the browser what to expect. So what I need to do with my image tag is add some so add some attributes. My first attribute is, yes, it's an image tag, and the attribute is where to find the image's source. The next, oh, 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 sorry. The next thing I need to do is I need to add the width, uh, which was, what was the width? The width was 215 pixels, and now I'm going to add the height. What was that? 200 pixels. Cool. Uh, width equals, and then in quotes, one last thing is, guess what? Not everybody in the world can see. And they can still use the internet because they have text readers that use the internet. Uh, that's why we try to make all of our web pages ADA compliant. And how we do that with our image tags is, imagine uh, the text reader is explaining, it's reading the HTML to the person who cannot see and it comes to the image, what is it supposed to make of the image? Well, you can give it an alt tag, and the alt tag is where you describe it. Smiley face with X eyes, right? So now the text reader can read that, and we've given it the width and the height so the browser knows what to prepare for, perfect. Uh, when we use these eight attributes, uh, it is good coding. Will the website work without these? Sure. Uh, but you want to get in some good habits now as opposed to later. I'm going to hit refresh. Ooh, wait a minute. Um, it distorted my image a bit, didn't it? Did you see that? It made it wider. I think I might have written my information down. I'm going to do Command I and let's see. Oh, it's 200 pixels wide by 200 high. Uh, do you see that? Too wide, high, width, height. So 200 pixels wide by 215 high. Perfect. I'm going to save that. Watch this magic that's going to happen. I'm going to hit refresh. OK, now it is no longer distorted. Great, so we've done a link and we've inserted an image. That's pretty useful. Um, I think I'm gonna take a little break and then we're going to, you don't need to know this, I'm gonna stop talking now. Okay, I have added a couple things. One is, remember how I got that image? Uh, by the way, I was saying copyright and this whole time I meant copyright free. So that means available to use. Uh, Unsplash has copyright free images, uh, but you do need to attribute. And in this case, I attributed photo by Charles Eteroma. Guess what? I wanted to put that in my code, but I didn't want it to be on my main page, right? We don't need that on there, but if someone's interested, they can look in the code, which I'll show you how to do later. Um, so what it is, it did is I commented it out. To make a comment in HTML, you do caret, exclamation point, dash, dash, this is a comment. Um, now, notice that the rest of my code is grayed out. I need to make sure I close my comment, and I do that by going dash, dash, caret, or delin delineator. So that's how you do a comment. And you do want to put comments in there because it helps you to understand what 
is going on in HTML behind the scenes. The other thing that I did was I added to my anchor tag, not just the hypertext reference attribute, but also target blank. This means that now when I click on the useless web, it'll open up a new tab elsewhere rather than replacing my main page. Cool, great. Uh, later on, I'm gonna go through while you're not looking and I'm gonna put comments in the HTML uh, and then make it available on GitHub for you.